So, I recently got involved with a discussion, initially proposed by a regressive, and that becomes important, which asked men how confident they were that they had never engaged in sexual harassment of women. I guess they don't care about gay men, or that sexual harassment of gay men doesn't matter, and for that matter, harassment of men by women, that's not important either. But anyhow, the majority of people answered that they were absolutely certain that they had never engaged in harassing behavior, and the regressives shit their pants. Because, as I said, this was all started by a regressive, specifically because they thought everyone would say that they had, thus confirming the bias of the regressive that men are, by their very nature, harassers. And the second it didn't go their way, they started calling all the people who said they'd never engaged in sexual harassment liars. Because them being wrong... That's not even an option. And this is not at all uncommon behavior for the regressive left. Somebody else started a similar discussion asking if those who had voted for Trump regretted their actions. And when the overwhelming majority of people said they didn't, they declared that everyone who said they didn't regret it was lying. And in fact, 100% of Trump voters hated that they had ever voted for Trump. It's really just absurd. Of course, I took exception to this tactic, and I called them out on it, stating that I had never sexually harassed anyone, ever, period. I had never engaged in anything that fits the legal definition of sexual harassment. Oh, but that's not good enough, said the regressives. If a woman is ever uncomfortable with anything that a man ever does, and again, it doesn't matter if a man's uncomfortable with what a woman does, they've got double standards, of course, but if a woman is ever uncomfortable, then the man is guilty regardless of the circumstances. Even if the woman voluntarily and willingly went along with it when it happened, if in retrospect she decides sometime down the road that for some reason she didn't like it, it retroactively becomes sexual harassment. Yes, these people are that stupid. But of course, you can't run a society that way. You can't decide that one group of people gets to arbitrarily and subjectively decide, with no objective criteria whatsoever, what constitutes harassment, and everyone just has to shut up and believe her because she's a woman. That's just stupid. But that's exactly what many of these regressive morons believe, that women get to arbitrarily make up whatever rules they want on an individual basis that can change at any time without warning, even retroactively, and the man is automatically guilty, so there. Yeah, sorry, doesn't work that way. So, I decided, screw this. I pulled out the EEOC rules on sexual harassment, which are one set of legal guidelines, and I laid them out for everyone to see. Absolutely nothing in the guidelines applies to anything that I've ever done in my life. Not one. Of course, I've never dated or tried to date anyone from my place of employment. Every single employer I can remember has had specific rules against fraternization with other employees. No dating among employees or one of you is going to get fired. And that's fine with me because I've never even had the slightest interest in dating a coworker. I've never asked anyone I worked with, anyone within the same company as me, for a date, even if we don't directly work together. So, none of that applies. And of course, none of the hostile workplace rules apply either, because usually, I'm the one who has to make sure that doesn't exist at all, and I hold everyone equally accountable. And the problem is, I couldn't find any other legal requirements, at least national legal requirements, for sexual harassment outside of the workplace. So I kind of doubt such a thing exists. So I asked them what they meant by harassment outside of the workplace, and they just started throwing around all kinds of just ridiculous subjective nonsense. Have I ever made a woman uncomfortable about anything? Ever. Well, not to my knowledge, and certainly not sexually. If I have, no woman has ever let me know about it, so I can't stop doing something I've got no clue about. Next, have I ever asked any woman out more than once? Well, I guess one of the accusers of Roy Moore is claiming that, and my answer is no. If I ask and she says no, 
I move on. Plenty of fish in the sea. And of course, I've been married for 25 years now, and I didn't ask anyone out for a long time before that, so I can honestly say, no, it's never happened. So I started digging further, and I found that, at least in some places, non-employment harassment can be illegal, but only where there's a business relationship. You have to be a client or a tenant or in some other professional relationship with the harasser, and they must not be able to walk away from the relationship without significant financial hardship. I mean, if you walk into a McDonald's and the guy behind the counter hits on you, that's not illegal sexual harassment because you can just walk out the door and go somewhere else. That's like catcalling. Catcalling is not illegal. You can just go somewhere else. Of course, they don't like that. It falls outside of their listen and believe narrative. If a woman isn't happy about what happens, then the man is always at fault. Never mind if she has absurdly unrealistic expectations about reality. That's not her problem. But you have to remember that these are the people who think that a man looking at a woman funny is somehow guilty of rape. Now, that's not what rape means, but definitions are fluid to the regressive left. The law doesn't matter. The real world doesn't matter. Only their subjective feelings at this exact moment make a difference. And if they feel differently tomorrow, they just shift their definitions, so whatever they don't like is guilty again. It's not about the law, it's about their emotions. And that's why it's so hard to take the regressive left seriously. Because they really don't care about the facts, they only care about their feelings. And the more I deal with them, the more absurd they get, and the more they seem to lose their grip on reality. Now, a while back, I mentioned some regressive woman at the University of Riverside who stole a guy's MAGA hat because she hated America. Well, apparently, she's going to prison for a year for theft. And I'm sure she can't figure out what the hell she did wrong. Because the law means nothing to someone who can't think. They can only feel. Maybe this idiot special snowflake will learn something behind bars about the harsh reality she actually lives in, not the fantasy world she wishes she did. But I'm not holding my breath. Anyhow, what do you think? Does the far left have any clue what sexual harassment means? Do they have any clue what anything means? Or are they just out there blowing in the wind whichever way their subjective emotions blow them that day? Let me know what you think in the comments. The more I'm around these morons, the less respect I have for them. The more crazy they actually appear to be. And I don't know how much crazier they can get, but I guess it'll be interesting to watch. Lunatics on the left, this has become the norm today. And I honestly can't say I'm all that surprised. Everything changes.